Let's watch a historical K-drama for her first time. Ooh, the costumes and the architecture are gorgeous. And the romantic relationships are so pure. Okay, I get it. Wait, who is this? Does the hat mean something? Is he the king? Wait, no. This is the king? What is happening? Can someone explain the plot? If you have some basic knowledge of Korean history or watched historical K-dramas before, then you already know that this is what a crown prince looks like and can easily tell when and where the story is set. But for first-time viewers who are not history buffs, the genre can be disorienting. A period drama is harder to understand than a story set in modern times. It is a world that needs a lot of explanation, but it has to be subtle. They can just write super obvious exposition. Tell me how long have we been brothers for and what does the shape of my hat mean? Nobody talks like this, that makes the dialogue sound ridiculous. They both know how the world around them works, why would they explain this to each other? This is where the audience surrogate comes in, a character who the viewers can identify with. By introducing a hero who is unfamiliar with the era and its customs, the audience stand in becomes a vessel through which the viewers can explore the world. Someone who can ask questions that the viewers also have. An audience surrogate makes the narrative more accessible and immersive for new viewers without making the story boring for people who watch TV shows in this genre before. Let's take a look at several different audience surrogate subtypes that can often be found in historical K-dramas, examine how they influence the story and what tropes emerge out of this narrative device. Stay tuned until the end of the video, where we will also discuss the downsides of making protagonists a little too relatable for modern viewers. A great way to write a relatable protagonist in a historical K-drama is through a plot device that I like to call Time Travel Body Swap. In this type of story, the main character lives in modern times and is dealing with present-day problems wishing they would just go away. The protagonist is then magically transported back in time by falling into a body of water. There are several popular K-dramas with that plot. For example, Moon Lover's Scarlet Heart and Mr. Queen. In both of these, the hero wakes up in a body of an already existing person, but with their modern personality and memories. In Splash Splash Love, the female lead is transported back in time in her own body, including modern day clothes, snacks, and her cell phone. A time traveling protagonist in a historical setting is extremely relatable. They have the same point of view as the audience and have the same questions we would also ask if we were in this situation. The time traveler needs to figure out when and where they are and has to learn to navigate the world together with the viewers. This type of audience surrogate is highly effective in conveying exposition without it feeling forced or unnatural. Their questions are not perceived as cringe because they genuinely don't know what's happening. The audience can relate to their confusion. It usually takes the hero several episodes to understand who is who, which is, coincidentally, exactly how long the audience needs to get into a story. You know who else gets to ask a lot of questions? Children! Another convenient way to introduce the premise of a story in a historical setting is by telling it from a kid's perspective. They get to ask as many questions as they want, and adults around them get to patiently and kindly explain all the relevant plot points in plain and understandable language. Exposition becomes charming and cute instead of cringe when children are delivering it. Watching kids play is easier to understand than watching the council discuss regional taxation laws with the king. Examples of historical K-dramas that use this plot device are Red Sleeve, The King's Affection, and 100 Days My Prince. 
The whole first episode, or sometimes the first two episodes, shows the main characters as children. Old enough to be smart and curious, but young enough to not understand everything that's happening. The child characters need to learn the complexities of the era, allowing the audience to explore the world alongside them without the expectation of extensive historical knowledge. By the end of the first episode, the audience is already invested in the story and understands the premise well enough to keep watching, and we can finally skip to when the characters are adults. Plus, this is a perfect way to include a childhood connection trope, which is a staple in any romance K-drama. Also, can we talk about the child actors in these TV shows for a moment? Imagine carrying the whole first episode of a major show on your back as a child. They have to be on the same level as all the older, experienced actors around them. These kids are really talented. If you see a child in a historical drama, remember their name, because in about 10 years they will probably get the main roles in high-budget K-dramas. This is where you can see the next generation of stars. Another audience proxy that is easy to relate to is the Sheltered Prince character. You can find this type of protagonist in Kingdom and Rookie Historian. He's usually a prince who lived a privileged and sheltered life in the palace. He's well-educated and book-smart, but has no idea how the world outside works. Like modern viewers, he knows a lot about science and literature, but doesn't have any real-life experience of the era, making him an effective audience insert character. In these types of stories, the sheltered prince explores how regular people live and what struggles they face. He often needs supporting characters to explain stuff to him as he enters the real world for the first time. The viewers learn about the injustices of the era together with the male lead, who goes on to live a more humble life outside the palace by the end of the story. The rookie newcomer is a character who comes to the big city for the first time or gets a new job in the palace. We can see a great example of this audience surrogate type in The Crowned Clown. The premise of the show introduces a poor clown who just happens to look exactly like the king. The protagonist is forced to switch places with him and experiences life in the palace as a complete outsider. The female lead in rookie historian Gu Heirong has a similar role in the narrative of her story. She is pretty much a modern feminist born in the wrong era and has the same ideas about womanhood as 21st century viewers do. She is new to her job in the palace, so it doesn't seem weird that people explain things to her all the time. This show also demonstrates pretty well that most historical K-dramas use several audience surrogate characters and plot devices, and not just one. Another storytelling device that a lot of historical K-dramas use are footnotes. Usually, they are used to explain specific archaic terms or translate hanja. All the characters know what they mean, because for them this is modern language. The footnotes are just for the viewers and don't take away precious screen time. It is a form of in-text commentary that lets the story progress without the need to write exposition dialogue. The footnotes there is no need to come up with a contrived way for a character to ask what every little word means. I think it is quite an elegant solution that provides context without taking the viewers out of the story. I also wanted to touch on the use of the modern Korean alphabet in historical K-dramas. For the viewer's benefit, whenever text is written in Korean, modern characters are used. The Korean alphabet changed a lot in the last 500 years, and used to have some extra characters that are no longer part of the language, which is never depicted on screen. It makes the story easy to follow at the expense of historical accuracy, which finally 
brings us to the main problem of this genre. Historical K-dramas are an inherently conservative genre about the good old days. These stories are supposed to give us a sense of nostalgia and escapism. They depict a highly romanticized and ahistorical version of the past that emphasizes traditional values like chivalry, purity, and monogamous love. At the same time, K-dramas downplay the rigid societal structures like patriarchy and slavery. Have you noticed that all the main characters in historical K-dramas have modern political views and sensibilities? The prince or the king, if he is the male lead, usually doesn't have concubines. It would be more realistic if he did, but that wouldn't make the romance compelling for modern viewers. He needs to respect women and be monogamous to appear desirable to the audience. The female lead is often a rebellious independent feminist who can make her own decisions and can easily get out of an arranged marriage. K-dramas conveniently glance over women being historically subordinate to men. If a story doesn't have a lot of romance, the main characters are really into the modern version of democracy, working hard on abolishing slavery in the class system, centuries before it happened in reality. Yes, all K-dramas include discussions of these topics, but they are portrayed as problems that need to be solved, and not as societal standards. The hero, who is of noble descent, most of the time has a servant who is treated like a cherished family member by the protagonist. This is often the comedic relief character who makes a lot of jokes and is happy to serve. The positive portrayal of the servant-master relationship downplays slavery and depicts it as cute. Not including servant characters at all would be revisionist history, so it has to be portrayed as a close friendship. We are not supposed to think too long about the nature of their relationship. Characters with modern, progressive sensibilities are the goodies, and the baddies have old, conservative views. The dissonance between conservatism and progressivism in historical K-dramas reflects the tension between the allure of the past and the values of the present. It allows the audience to engage with the historical setting while still aligning themselves with modern and inclusive ideas. Ironically, some of the most feminist and progressive Korean TV shows are period dramas. None of this is historically accurate, but if protagonists held views that were common at the time, it would be way harder to root for them. If a K-drama shows the past as violent and oppressive, it automatically becomes a tragic story with a sad ending. It is important to recognize that historical K-dramas are works of fiction and entertainment. Recent costume dramas are a really bad place to learn about the history of Korea. Older ones, from the 90s and early 2000s, paid more attention to historical accuracy. There was a major shift in this genre in the last 20 years, but that is a topic for another time. <laughs>